and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, what we'll be looking at is the internal control and substantive testing of the payroll and personnel cycle. Now, bear in mind, this is the second recording in this uh, in this uh, module, which is auditing payroll and personnel cycle. In the first session, we look at the introduction. So by all means, if you need to, go back and view the introduction cycle. Now, just like with every cycle, the first thing we do, we have to understand the internal control. Then we have to assess the internal control. Uh, for the cycle, then determine if we're going to test or not test the internal control. Remember, we only test the internal control if we think we're going to rely on them. Otherwise, if the company is publicly traded company, you have to test the internal control. Then you design the uh, test of control and substantive testing. Assume you want to test the internal control and you will go ahead and perform the substantive testing. So this is basically the overall picture. Now, understanding the internal control. Um, Internal control, generally speaking, for payroll is highly structured and well controlled. Again, because people are being paid and they're going to be very careful. And management is going to be very careful as well as the owners of the company. Okay, So usually it's assessed low, generally speaking. Now, for three reasons, employees are likely to complain if they are underpaid. All payroll transactions typically are uniform, they're the same. And again, there should be no error for mistake. And remember, payroll is subject to a lot of uh, reviews by government, such as um, uh, federal and state government, that they come and they make sure you're computing the tax rates correctly, you are submitting the appropriate amount. So also you have some external pressure to make sure it's being uh, the work is being done correctly. Now let's take a look at some key internal control for payroll. What are some internal control? The first one is adequate separation of duties. Now in the prior session, we looked at adequate separation of duties. And basically what we're trying to say is HR, payroll and the treasurer should be separate function. What we want to avoid in all of this is we don't want to add ghost employees, basically employees that don't exist and pay them. The other thing we want to make sure we have key internal control is proper authorization. Human resources should, should authorize additions and deletion to payroll. So not everyone can add an employee. Only HR can add the employee, but HR cannot compute their payment and they cannot pay them, but they can only add them. Okay, so proper authorization and approval needed for all time cards. So if somebody wants to submit their uh, their time card for pay, they need to they need to have approval. Adequate documents and record. So what is adequate document and record depending on how large is the company and what's involved. But usually when you have people who are getting paid hourly, they need to have time card. If they are being paid by piece rate, they need to have a time card. And remember, every time we, we discuss documents, remember, 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 all documents will need to be pre-numbered and sequ sequentially used. Also, we want to make sure we have physical and logical control over payment. So we have to... to to, to restrict access to unassigned payroll checks so nobody can, can get to them. And if it's a direct deposit, restrict access only for people uh, uh, for people who don't need to access the uh, banking system. So only people with access should be able to access the payroll. Uh, independent checks on performance. A member of management or other responsible employee should review payroll for obvious misstatements and for reasonableness. Someone should take a look at the at the payroll. Now those are general internal control. Now we're going to look at specific transaction related audit objective. Again, we're going to go through all of them. We're going to go through occurrence, completeness, uh, so on and so forth. So let's start with occurrence. So what, what is the occurrence objective in this uh, in the payroll cycle? And it's important. It means recorded payroll payment are for work actually performed by existing employees. So occurrence means whatever we are paying, we are paying for existing employees and for actual work. Now, what does the company do to make sure what type of key internal control does the company involve in order to make sure this is happening? Well, all time cards should be approved. Now, how do we test for this as internal control? Well, we examine time cards to see if there is approval. Time clock is used to record time. Well, we examine the time record. Adequate human resource files are maintained. Review the HR. See if they have adequate records. See if they have the original application that the employee submits. See if they have the background check. See if they have the uh, criminal background check, the credit report, so on and so forth. Employment is authorized. See if in the HR that there's an authorization when we hire someone. There's a segregation of duties among HR, timekeeping, and payroll. This is important. Once again, here we review the organizational chart to make sure this is happening. Only employee existing in the computer files are accepted when they are entered. Well, examine printout of transaction rejected by a computer as having non-existing employee number. Try to input employee numbers because they're saying only employees with valid numbers 
can be put into the system. Disbursement are authorized before issuance. Well, are they out, are they authorizing? Examine payroll record for indication of approval. This is what we do as internal control. Now, how do we do substantive testing for those key internal control? Well, for for the time record are approved by supervisor, we review payroll journal, payroll journal, general ledger, and payroll earning record for large or unusual amount or transaction. We scan the journal and there's any amount that doesn't make any sense to us, pull it and go back to the source document and see if everything is there. Compare cancel check or direct deposit with human resource record. Select a check and go back and see if that individual exists or a direct deposit. Compare cancel checks with payroll journal for name, amount, and date. Look at the check and make sure it's recorded properly. So the dollar amount is recorded properly. Examine cancel checks for proper endorsement. For example, if you wrote the check to John Smith, John Smith actually endorsed the check and not someone else. Okay. This way we know that the employees exist they are valid employees and they are paid for hours that actually that they actually work another audit related objective transaction audit related objective is completeness what is completeness existing transaction are recorded so all payroll transaction are recorded how do we make sure completeness remember when it comes to completeness we want to make sure we're dealing with pre-numbered the company says payroll checks are pre-numbered and accounted for well guess what what are we going to do we're going to account for sequence of payroll pay sequence of payroll checks and as a test of as a substantive testing we're going to reconcile the disbursement in the payroll journal with the disbursement and the bank statement to make sure that everything is paid matches the uh, everything on the bank statement paid matches the journal they say the bank account are independently reconciled that's what they're saying they're doing as part of the internal control discuss with the employee and observe reconciliation see if they are doing this and go us go guess what prove the bank reconciliation go back and redo the bank reconciliation see if they match what they did okay this is for completeness accuracy we want to make sure they are paid the proper amount recorded payroll transaction are for the amount of time actually work and at the proper pay rates so it's not only they work you know a certain amount of hours the rate has to be correct as well as well the withholding so we're looking at three things here we want to make sure we're, they're paying the appropriate um, they are paying for they are being paid for the appropriate hours the correct rate and the amount of withholding is correct so what do, what does the company do what type of internal control that they follow well uh, calculation and amount are internally verified well examine see if they are verified as test of internal control and as a substantive testing recompute the hours and see if they are correctly computed Okay, they're saying that they have a batch total are compared with computer summary. So they compare the batch total with the computer summary. Well, guess what? Examine file of batch total for initial of data control clerk. Compare total summary to report. So if they're saying they're doing this, see if they are doing this. And guess what? Then compare, then as, subs, as a substantive testing, a little bit further, compare pay rate with union contract, approval by board of directors, and other source. They're saying wage rate, salary, or or commission rate is properly authorized. They're saying those are properly authorized. Well, examine payroll record for an indication of authorization. Every time they say something is authorized, show me that it's authorized. And in the, in the test of control, show me. Show me some type of indication that it was properly authorized. Then to really, to see if they are doing it properly, you recompute the gross pay. Recompute the gross pay. What the heck? Do it again. And this way, you know, it's authorized and you did the computation. It's good. It matches their computation. We're all good to go. Now it comes to withholding. They're saying including amount for insurance and payroll savings are properly authorized. So withholding, insurance, payroll savings, all these are authorized. Well, examine authorization and HR. See if they have authorization and HR for those withholding. Then guess what? Recompute those authorization and see if they match what they did. And this is how we know that the amount is accurate. We met the accuracy objective. Okay. Another audit objective is posting and summarization. And what is posting and summarization? Well, payroll transactions are correctly included in the payroll master file and are correctly summarized. So basically, they're adding everything and it's being posted in the right places. Well, payroll master file can, can content are internally verified. Well, if that's what they're internally verified, show me some verification and I'm going to test the clerical accuracy by footing the payroll journal and tracing to the ledger and the payroll master file. Payroll master file are total and compared with the general ledger. I'm going to do this step again. Show me the show me the uh, show me that it is being approved and I'm going to and I'm going to recompute it. And this is how I would know you are properly posting from the journal to the ledger. 
classification. Classification could be an issue. We'll talk about classification a little bit shortly. Payroll transactions are correctly classified. Well, how does the company make sure they're correctly classified? They have an adequate chart of account. Well, I'm going to review their chart of account as part of the control. And they're set account classification are internally verified. And every time they post an expense to an account, they internally verify it. And show me the verification. Now, what do I do as a test, substantive test of transaction? I'm going to compare classification with chart of account or procedure manual. You're saying you have this account. Show me that it's there. Okay. I'm going to review time record for employee department and job job ticket for job assignments and trace through labor distribution. So simply put, if you said this employee work at that one for a thousand dollar and that one thousand dollar, a three hundred of it should be expense and seven hundred of it should be inventory. Is it inventory be, means part of cost of goods sold? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna find out where did that where did that employee spend the one thousand dollars? See if it's three hundred should be expense and seven hundred should be inventoried. Timing. Timing means payroll transaction are recorded on the correct date. And this is important. Well, the key internal control procedures require recording transaction as soon as possible after the payroll is paid. That's what they're saying. And dates are internally verified. Well, if that's the case, examine indication of internal verification and examine procedures manual and observe when recording when recording takes place. If you're saying you're doing this on a timely fashion, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the chance to see if you're doing it because payroll is bi-weekly or bi-monthly. Then as a substantive testing, a little bit further, I'm going to compare date of recorded payment in the journal with date on the cancel check or direct deposit. So I'm going to check this. I'm going to see when did you write the check? Okay, what's the date on the check? And what's the date in the journal? And they should, they should match or close. Compare dates on checks with the date cleared by the bank. What's the date on the check? And what when did it clear by the bank? It should not. It should, that should not be that much of a difference. So those are um, uh, the uh, audit, the transaction-related audit objective, which are important for payroll. Other issues that we have to deal with payroll is payroll tax form and payment. Remember, when they take money from the employee paycheck, you want to make sure as the auditor it's being co computed properly and it's being sent. So the auditor should review sent to the appropriate government agency. So the auditor should review the preparation of at least one of each type of payroll tax form during the understanding of the internal control. So you want to do this. And uh, the auditor should also test whether the client has fulfilled its legal obligation in submitting payment for all withholding. Also, here we are dealing with, are they submitting their insurance payment? Are they submitting the, the 401k payment on behalf of the employees? Now, inventory could be an issue for some companies, for manufacturing companies and construction. Why? Because when the employee work on a project, their, um, their pay may be expense, their pay may be inventoried. Okay, if payroll affect the valuation of inventory, the auditor often extend payroll audit procedures. Why? Because they want to make sure that the, uh, the, the amount we are paying the employee is being charged to the right, into the right account. Is it an expense or is it cost of goods sold, which is inventory, then it turns into cost of goods sold. So when payroll is a significant portion of inventory, the improper classification, here's it's important. We want to make sure it's going into the right chart of account. Can materially affect asset valuation for work in process and finished goods. Remember, for manufacturing companies, we have raw material or work in, we have, yes, mat uh, raw material. We have work in process and we have finished goods. So if we expense something, if we expense payroll that's supposed to be part of work in process, then guess what? Our work in process is incorrect. This is all. This is all part of inventory. Then your inventory is incorrect. Then also, if your inventory is incorrect, it's going also going to affect cost of goods sold. Other fraudulent payroll uh, things we should be on the lookout for is test for fraudulent hours. Basically, um, we could use a software to look for unusual number of hours or unusual amount. Fraudulent expense report. Here we are dealing with examining travel and entertainment expenses. We want to examine receipts. And remember, if there's any problem with travel and entertainment expense, also that's going to give you some information about the company's the management integrity. So here, you know, you deal with internal control. Also, you want to test for non-existent employee or ghost employee. Now, how do ghost employee come into existence? Often it's when an employee let go and some some somebody keep them on record. Okay, so keeping the employee after termination, that's 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 considered a ghost employee. What you need to know, you need to compare names of canceled checks with time cards. So look at the checks and see if they have a valid time card. Usually they don't give them a time card, right? 
Also, you could a software can scan checks for second endorsement. If someone is, let's assume a supervisor is is kept an employee after termination, and the supervisor is clearing the check for the employee. Basically, they're getting paid and they're issuing the check to themselves. There will be two signature on the check. So see if the software can detect two signature on cancel check. Trace checks to HR. Collect, look at some checks and see if they still exist on the HR record. Review termination policies and procedures. See how did they terminate employees. And also you could use audit software, termination of HR date to payroll record. So if HR terminate them, the software should tell you when should be the last payroll and there should be no paycheck after this. This is how you test for non-existing employee. So this is basically an overview of internal control and substantive procedures for payroll. The next thing we look at is analytical procedures, which is part of the substantive testing and test of detail um, of accounts. It's not a lot for payroll, but we'll look over it and that will be it for payroll. If you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. As always, if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard. It's worth it.